Hello and welcome to the Arcades video series on economics. My name is Markus Alborn and today we will talk about equilibrium. We will find out how the two market forces, supply and demand, will determine the outcome of our market, equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. This concept is one of the most fundamental tools in economics. First, we will see how this market equilibrium comes about and afterwards we will analyze what happens if the underlying parameters of supply and demand change. Economists use models all of the time. They make strict assumptions that at times might be a little unrealistic, but they do this to make the world, or at least aspects of it, understandable and they want to be able to capture that world mathematically. In doing so, they are able to isolate and then analyze causes and effects in this complex and extremely interdependent economy. So we, for example, again build a model of the market for apples and now we try to find the initial equilibrium and then we can start altering parameters. So this will enable us to find out, for example, what will happen if the income of our apple consumers is increasing or what will happen if productivity of apple farmers increases or decreases due to a good or bad harvest. So let us turn to our model of the apple market and let's search the initial equilibrium. We will continue, of course, to use the price quantity diagram with our supply and demand curves. And remember what we learned about the two sides of the market. The demand curve is determined by the willingness to pay of our consumers. So some are willing to pay a lot, others not so much. Therefore, the demand curve is sloping negatively. And on the other hand, we have supply, which is determined by profit maximizing firms that face increasing marginal costs. So if the quantity that is being produced and sold increases, the costs will increase and therefore firms need a high revenue, so higher prices, to keep making a profit. So therefore the supply curve slopes positively. The higher the quantity, the higher the price charged. And now we put these two sides of the market together and where the equilibrium point is should be obvious by just looking at the graph, it is where supply and demand meet. This point will give us the equilibrium price and the equilibrium quantity. But why? What makes this point so special? Well, let's consider all other points. What if we are below the intersection? Well, you see that for any price below P star, we will have more demand than supply. That's what we call a shortage. There are more consumers that want to buy at this low price than sellers that are wanting to sell. So let's take a look at what this would mean on our market for apples. People demand more apples than the sellers are providing. And what will a smart apple farmer do now? Well, of course, she will increase her prices to take advantage of this high willingness to pay of the consumers. So whenever we have such a shortage on our market, we will have pressure for increasing prices. Therefore, all points below our equilibrium are not stable. Sellers see the potential for higher profits because the willingness to pay for the given quantity is higher than the current price. Or to put it differently, the demanders will bid up the price as long as we have this shortage. Now let's see what happens at any point above this intersection. There we have the opposite, a surplus. At these prices, the quantity supplied is higher than what people are demanding. What will happen here? Well, the exact opposite of before. Our apple farmers see that not enough people are buying their product, so they have to lower prices if they do not want to throw away their apples. That's the same that happens at the end of every season on the market for clothing. Think about all the emails and notifications that you receive about the latest sale at the end of that season. For example, winter coats 50% off in March or flip-flops 40% off in September. That's a typical surplus. More winter coats, scarves, flip-flops or bikinis have been produced than people wanted to buy. Hence, suppliers have to lower their prices. And this pressure for lower prices will come about whenever we are in a situation where prices are higher than they would be in equilibrium. So whenever we are above or below P star, prices will face a pressure to change. Either they increase because we have a shortage or they decrease because we have a surplus. These are the two driving forces behind our equilibrium. Only there, at that point, where demand and supply are equal, we have a stable situation which does not change unless the underlying parameters change. And now we can do exactly that. We can ask ourselves how changing external circumstances, which we before modeled as shifts of the demand and supply curve, how they change our equilibrium. 
So remember that anything that changes the willingness to pay of our consumers will shift the demand curve and that anything that changes the cost revenue relation, so the profits of our firms, will shift the supply curve. So let's start with an upward shift of the demand curve, for example, due to higher income. As you can see, we now have a new equilibrium with a higher price and a higher quantity. But why? Well, let's look at our old equilibrium price. At this price, we will have a shortage because demand is higher than supply. As we discussed, a shortage means pressure on prices to increase. The suppliers then see this situation as an opportunity to increase the quantity supplied and thereby increase prices, which is exactly what will happen. How long will this process last? Well, prices and quantities will increase as long as this shortage persists. So this process only stops when we reached a new equilibrium where there is no more pressure on the price to increase. So applied to our Apple market, this would, for example, mean that there's an external effect, for example, a new study showing how healthy apples are, or, as discussed, a rise in income, which will increase the willingness to pay for apples of all our consumers, and the Apple farmers then see this opportunity to increase the supplied quantity and to increase the price, so we will end up with more apples sold at a higher price. So now let's turn to a shift in supply. When we look at a positive productivity shock, so a shift of the supply curve down and to the right, something similar will happen. At our old equilibrium price, we now face a surplus, since supply is higher than demand. Hence, producers will lower their prices, which will increase the quantity demanded. So prices will fall in this case and quantities will increase until we have reached our new equilibrium. On our market for apples, this will, for example, be the case in a year with a very good apple harvest. The productivity of apple farmers is increasing, causing the supply curve to shift down and to the right, which will produce a surplus, and in the end, we will have a lower price and a higher quantity. So here we get to know the market mechanism, one of the most central and useful tools in all of economics. We can apply this market mechanism to all kinds of situations. We can use it as we did to see what happens on markets if the underlying parameters of supply and demand change. All types of applications come to mind here. For example, what happens to oil prices if people stop buying gasoline-driven cars? What happens to the price of energy if specific sources of energy production are forbidden? What happens to the prices of football players if clubs generate higher TV revenues? And so on and so forth. Further, we can and will analyze what happens if other surrounding parameters change. For example, what happens if the state intervenes and sets limits to prices, such as a minimum wage or rent control, or what happens if we only have one single supplier who can set prices as she likes. So this was our video on the equilibrium of the market mechanism. I will see you in class or in one of the other videos. Until then, goodbye.